Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today's episode is very, very special. I'm going to show you a product that I've been working on for months. Some of you have been lucky enough to get one of these and try it out on your own already, but for the majority, nobody even knows it exists. If you have ever pulled a pad with your desoldering wick or scratched up a board beyond recognition, then I'm about to change everything for you with my new set of specialized desoldering tweezers specifically designed for the niche market of rework and repair. So you might be thinking to yourself, wow Justin, another set of tweezers to add to my big giant collection of useless tools. Well, that would be the correct assumption if it wasn't for the fact that my product pretty much eliminates every issue associated with micro and macro soldering cleanup. My inverse ceramic tweezers go above and beyond the call of duty to eliminate all three different types of heat sinking issues associated with pad removal during desoldering. And as an added bonus, I even found a way to prevent the dreaded hot air burn that plagues just about everyone. Okay, so maybe I have your attention now. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of it and talk shop. What are these three major heat sink issues and how is my product going to prevent you from pulling those precious pads and more importantly, getting you out of random sticky situations when it comes to your desoldering. To really drive these points home, we need to know that heat travels from a high energy state to a low energy state and not the reverse. This is heat sinking at its core. When you think of your desktop CPU cooling system, you think of that big aluminum block whisking away heat from the high energy source, which is your CPU, to a lower energy state system, the cooling block. This fundamental essential knowledge is your key to unlocking the power of this special tool. Now, what I just described to you is happening every single time you rework your board, except it's happening in multiple directions at the same time. This can be very frustrating when you're not quite sure why or how it's happening. So what exactly are these three big heat sinks? They would be your tool, your board, and your wick. All three of these are in a constant state of flux with the energy being supplied by your hot air or soldering iron. As you do your work, you could unintentionally heat sink way too much, causing unforeseen issues to arise and create frustration in your work. That's where my tool comes in to save the day, by allowing you to use the perfect amount of heat to clean up your board. No more. This custom tool will eliminate all three major types of heat sinking, the first being your wick. Let's do a little experiment real fast, just to kind of illustrate a point. We've got some wick right here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my soldering iron. Okay, Now, I'm going to hold this right here, and I'm going to heat this up. Oh, there it comes. Ah, point proven. All that heat is traveling through your entire roll of soldering wick. In effect, wasting the energy and pulling it away from our target, which is the board. So to fix this, let's cut the wick short, decreasing its thermal mass while increasing the efficiency of its usage. Once we have our new short wick, which can easily be reloaded when needed, we can see that this set of tweezers has a special ceramic head. This head was put in especially to combat the next type of heat sinking, which comes directly from your tool itself. Don't forget, this tool is made of metal, a pretty good conductor that has pretty high thermal conductance overall. This special ceramic head prevents heat from running up your tool, which can not only burn you, but can easily take much of the thermal energy you're putting in. Okay, okay, I think you might be making sense, Justin. But what about the board? You said it's got a heat sinking problem too, right? Absolutely. As you heat up your board, you waste a lot of your energy just saturating the board well enough that your target joint or BGA plane can reach wetting temperatures. Not anymore. Since we have eliminated issues 1 and 2, issue 3 pretty much eliminates itself. Let's go ahead and thermally saturate our micro wick and try this out on a board. On that note though, check out why I put this awesome 90 degree angle on the end of these bad boys. It totally prevents you from directly blasting yourself with heat, which in essence could be the fourth and most unwanted of the heat sinking, right? Now, I've talked enough about this amazing new tool. It's time to show it in action. I'm a huge believer in action speaking louder than words. So let my tool do the rest of the work 
by showing you what it's capable of. So now that we talked about it, let's go ahead and dive right in the microscope and see this thing in action. And you're gonna have to forgive me. Some of these boards, I mean, they're right out my donor box and they are thrashed. I mean, I'm talking about thrashed. But it's good, it's good, it's gonna work out. So let's go ahead and dive right in here and let me give you some good examples. All right, first up, we got everybody's favorite repair, Touch IC. All right, let's take a look see here. So we can see here that at this point, the chip would have been taken off, it's been re-alloyed, it's time to clean it up. Let's go ahead and take our tweezers, and if you're using dip flux, you can kind of dip it in there a little bit and brush it on there. Very, very easy. Very precise, too. All right, so we've got it on there. Let's go ahead and thermally saturate our wick. Now, you remember I was talking about this earlier. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're going to heat up the wick itself, and this is gonna thermally saturate it, okay? This is gonna prevent it from having to heat sink further. So now that it's heated up, give it a little bit, we're gonna start heating the board up, and all we're gonna do is just start brushing. Look at that. No big deal. Holy crap, did you see how easy that was? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna pick up that residual solder from the other side. So we're gonna heat it up just a little bit more, get it started. I'm gonna come back down to the board. I'm gonna start brushing. All right. Done, that's it. Just took a few seconds. Let's move on to the next example. What do we got here? We got ourselves a good old PMIC. All right, man, that looks nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Let's see if we can clean that up, all right? So once again, and we're still using the same wick here. This is gonna last you for a second, especially if you're doing micro work. Go ahead and add some flux. Let's get a little bit more. And you can see I'm just using it as a brush. It's very, very easy. Well, if I could get some on there. There we go. All right. All right, so now that it's brushed on, let's go ahead and heat it up. Once it's heated up, we'll start heating the board and we'll just start brushing. And once you notice that you're actually getting it cleaned up, you can just start moving down the board. Oh, wow. All right, let's flip it. And let's finish it up. And you see how I'm just doing it right in one spot, and as soon as it starts cleaning, Just start brushing. How about that? That is amazing. That is immaculate. Let's clean it up. Let's take a look at it. Woo, a little hot there. Probably should have let it cool, but. Oh, wow. Look how clean that is. Absolutely perfect. Now, all right, all right, it can clean up BGA arrays. But what about these other sticky situations you've been talking about, Justin? Well, I've got another good one for you. And once again, this is a donor board, so you know, keep your judgments to yourself. Oh no, look at that bridge. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna take this one more time, put a little bit of flux on it, no big deal. And just like we did before, we're gonna thermally saturate the wick. So at this point, we're just heating it up a little bit and we're gonna come down, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna start brushing a little bit. And you'll start to see that they'll start to sweep away and you'll see the little lines coming up in there and oh, what is that?
Done. That simple. Now, for my fourth and final example, we'll see why having more than one set around your lab can increase your productivity by letting you focus on what matters and not things that don't, like holding on to a charging port. Oh man, this one looks bad. Looks like somebody's already tried to train on it. Somebody's taking stuff off the board. This one, this one's pretty beat, but I think we can still change this thing out and do at least one good job on this board. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and showcase two for one repair now. Okay, we're gonna make this a little bit simpler for you. What I'm gonna do is instead of taking my regular 7SAs here and holding onto the port or, you know, using either some kind of like paddle style, you know, set of tweezers, these inverse ceramic tweezers are gonna do all the grabbing for you. It's gonna make it much easier. So I'm gonna take it, I'm just gonna grab the entire port. I let go. I'm not touching it. Okay, now. At that point, we're going to go ahead and get her heated up, and this thing's going to come off real simple easy. Watch this. You don't have to worry about holding it. You don't have to worry about your hands being directly next to that heat. And you can focus on, you know, watching that, uh, that phase state change. Oh, you see it's starting to get going. Come on, give her to me. There we go. Just a little bit of a twisty twist there. How about that? But we're not done. We're not done. What do we got right there? Just holding on tight. No big deal. Now we're going to take number two. Grab ourselves some solder. We're going to re-alloy this whole thing. Now, I know, I know that it is something of a miracle that anybody ever gets an anchor cleaned out like that right off the bat. This is going to change things for you, okay? If you're having anchor problems, this is going to solve it. So we're going to go ahead and re-alloy. That way we can change the molecular structure of the solder itself to a lower melting point one. And I'm kind of giving it a little more heat here. You know, reason for that being I wanted to kind of saturate through the entire anchor joint, okay? There we go, just fill it on up. All right, and then finally, let's get across those pins. Oh man, I'm excited. You guys are gonna love it when you see this. All right, so at this point we got no pull pads, came off real easy. I'd say we're, we're off to a pretty good start. Now, it usually does start off pretty good and then you get to this part where you're like, oh, I gotta clean it out, I gotta get stuff in there, blah, 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 you know. Watch this. You can see down here I'm heating up the actual wick. And if it's got a little on there, you can push down a little bit, and as soon as it starts to actually bend, you know it's saturated. Watch this. There we go. Oh, what's that? Oh, wow, I just sucked it right on out of there. Now, it looks like our wick after, what was that? We did a touch IC, we did PMIC, we cleaned up that big, you know, solder bridge mess. Okay, okay, all that out of this. Well, let's take a look at it and see. Well, that's crazy. We only use that much. How much wick would have you used for these jobs? We're just gonna flip it over. Look at that, now we got a whole new one. We just flip it over, it's that easy. We're going to go ahead and clean up this other side. So just give it those brush strokes. You'll see this. Oh, instant. Done. And let's see if we got enough for these pads. Oh, look at that. Dunzo Washington. You're, you're, at, you're done. I mean, did you see any pain in my face, that was too easy. All thanks to having one 
And two. Look at that. Da -dun -dun. So, after all of that, I'll let you be the judge. And if you want to try out my amazing new product, all you have to do is go down and click the link in my description and purchase it on Amazon. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how well it works because I wouldn't just put my face on anything.